In this video, I want to show you exactly what I would do if I was just starting to fly FPV in 2024. <music> FPV is an incredible thing. Whether you're just flying for fun or you want to be a professional FPV pilot and make a living doing it, it's insanely fun and rewarding. I started flying FPV back in 2018 and back then it was no joke to get started. There weren't any pre-built drones on the market really and there was just so much gear out there on the internet to kind of sift through and figure out what would work best for you. It was so confusing. It took me like a month of research to figure out what gear I needed and then when it finally came in, I spent another three months figuring out how to build my drone, took it out flying, and of course, instantly completely demolished it, and it felt like all that work was for nothing. Back then, everything was also on analog, so when you were flying, you were pretty much flying through like a 1970s TV, and you couldn't even really tell where you were going most of the time. Gear has come so far since those days, and it's never been easier to learn. But even then, it is still much harder to learn than any other drone. So I see so many people trying, giving it a go, and then just giving up. So I wanted to just make a bit of a roadmap for people to follow. That's just super step-by-step -step to make the process way easier. With that said, let's hop into the first thing anyone should do that's trying to learn FPV, which is hitting the like button on this video. In return, I will put a photo of a really cute baby goat at the end of this video. But seriously, the first thing that you need to do when you're learning FPV is put some time into an FPV simulator. This is basically a computer simulator that you plug a controller up to and it acts like you're flying in the real world. This way you can learn how to fly, get all the controls down without destroying like 100 FPV drones. The first thing you'll need for that is a controller. There's quite a few cheaper options to go with as far as controllers, but in my personal opinion, I would recommend getting the controller that you're eventually going to fly with for two reasons. First, you're just gonna get used to flying with the controller that you'll eventually end up flying with. And then secondly, you won't have to spend additional money on a controller because you'll just have your permanent controller from the get-go. In my opinion, the best one to go with is the DJI Remote Controller 2. This is the remote that I fly with day in and day out. And I just love the like video game form factor of this thing. And eventually when you start flying real FPV drones, DJI has just made it so simple to link everything up and get in the air right away. Another option that I see a lot of people using is the Tango 2. This runs on a different receiver protocol than the DJI, but it's a similar process to kind of get everything linked up. I made a whole video kind of on the pros and cons of each of these different controllers, as well as just went through every single piece of FPV equipment that I have. Everything from controllers to goggles to drones to cameras that I put on top. So if you want to check that video after you guys are done watching this video, I'll leave a little link up here. But once you find a controller, it's finally time to download a simulator and get practicing. The simulator that I learned on and really loved is FPV Freerider. It just has some super fun maps and stuff, but another one that a lot of people use is Liftoff. And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which one you learn on as long as you're learning. The simulators are super simple. I'm just gonna plug it up right now. And you just plug your controller in. I find that sometimes it was hard to connect my controller to the computer, so you just have to really try quite a few cords until you find one that works. I find that the USB to USB-C cords work pretty well. Pick whatever map you want, and then you are ripping and rolling and immediately crash. <laughs> And these simulators are honestly pretty addicting and fun. So how I put in the time in the very beginning when I was first learning was every time that I had a phone call, I would just throw on the FPV simulator and just put in those hours. In the beginning, you're gonna crash a ton. Even if you're used to flying normal DJI drones, you're gonna crash like a million times. And that's because the controls are just slightly different and you're fully in control of the drone. Joshua Bardwell has a very in-depth series where he kind of covers like individual moves and things you can do to practice FPV, which I would definitely recommend if you're into that but I'd say for me the best thing that I did was just flying crashing flying crashing flying crashing a little less flying crashing a little bit less and then eventually you kind of get the hang of it I'd say it usually takes around 30 hours in the simulator to get pretty solid at it after you nail down the controls you're ready to get your first pair of goggles and actual drone you basically have three options from here if money isn't a limiting factor I would recommend going with the DJI Avada it's my number one pick because for one it's incredibly easy to set up and get in the air. It's also super durable and you're not gonna outgrow it. I still use my Avada 
all the time. I just put a GoPro on top because I don't really like the camera, but I use this for drone tours all the time. The cheapest option is to get a small, ready to fly tiny whoop kit. These drones are super tiny. They come with a pair of goggles and a controller. So you have everything that you need. And in the very beginning, if you wanna just use the controller from this as your simulator controller and get the ready to fly tiny whoop kit right off the bat, you can do that as well. They're super fun to fly through the house. You can even take them outside to the yard and you can get some experience flying an actual drone. The best ones that I've seen are the Gep RC Tiny Go. And then if you wanna spend a little bit less money, you can go for the Emax Tiny Hawk. Links are down below to both of those if you do wanna test them out. I get a small commission if if you do use those links so if you do it would mean the world to me because it just allows me to make more videos like this the third and final option is just to go for a proper big fpv drone like the iflight nazgul 5. you just have to make sure that this drone is compatible with whatever controller you did so if you are using the dji controller just make sure that the drone has an o3 air unit inside and you can just use that to control the drone however if you end up getting the tango 2 you just have to make sure that you get one with crossfire installed because that's the receiver protocol that that controller uses. With DJI, it's incredibly simple to just get the drone right out of the box and hook everything up. With the Tango, it's also pretty simple, but just a little bit different. Next up, you'll need a pair of goggles. Like I said before, I made a video going super into depth about all the gear, all the drones, controllers, goggles, and compared a bunch of different ones. So definitely check that video out after you're done watching this one. But goggles are basically gonna run you anywhere from $350 to $650. Again, I'll link to all my recommendations below, but my number one recommendation are the DJI goggles too. Once you have the drone, it's time to link everything up. If you ended up going with the DJI Avada, there are a ton of good videos about how to link everything up. Or if you go with another pre-built drone, I have another video where I cover exactly how to link all the components up with this drone, as well as how to do all the setup as far as setting up the GPS return to home, mapping all the buttons on your controller and everything else. So feel free to watch that, link is up here. Next step is just to go out and fly. No matter how good you are at the simulator, you should anticipate that your first flight is not going to be perfect. So I would 100% recommend finding a big open field to go practice in. When I first started learning, I just went down to the local baseball field by my house and just did a bunch of laps around there. At this point, it's just all about time and repetitions. Fly as much as you can in this open environment before you do anything crazy. But if you put the time in, you'll be ready to fly in no time in bigger and better environments. And once you do feel comfortable, it's time to go out and start ripping epic ridgeline dives or following your friend driving a cool car and getting sick content to post on Instagram, if that's what you're into. Like I just mentioned before, I have an entire video covering all of the linking process, GPS setup, controller mapping, and just everything you need to actually get your drone in the air. So definitely check that out. Also, if you're someone who's interested in having a much more in-depth education about FPV and how to get everything going, I do have a bit of a mini course that just gets a lot more into depth about all the things that I talked about here today. So if you wanna check that out, link is down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best on your FPV journey and I will see you on the next video. As promised, here's a photo of a really cute baby goat. <laughs> Peace.